Hi, this is Anil from Learning Lad Education, and welcome to another tutorial on Java programming language. So, uh, in this tutorial, we're gonna learn about the Java primitive types, and then the Java primitive variables, and then the Java reference types, and then about the Java reference variables. So, uh, here for the demonstration purpose, I have created this tutorial class and I have this main meta inside this tutorial class, and also I have created another class called student and inside the student class i have a class property called roll number and then i have a method called roll number please so this roll number please method is just gonna print out the roll number which we're gonna be storing in this roll number variable so now in java there are two types one is the java primitive types and another one is the java reference types so the numeric types you know the integers the floating point numbers the doubles and then the character types then the boolean types are the java primitive types and then the classes then the arrays are the java reference types so uh, now what happens when we create a variable of a java primitive type so here in my uh, main method what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create an integer variable and let me call this variable as x and then uh, let me initialize this variable x with a value of 10 now our x variable is containing the value of 10 then let me create another variable of uh, integer type and let me call it as y and i'm gonna initialize this y variable with a value of let's say 20 so now or if you know that you know this x and y are just the name given to the memory locations where we're gonna be storing this 10 and 20. If I have to draw the representation of you know how they're gonna be stored in memory then you guys can see here you know this x variable is the name given to a memory location which is gonna be containing the value 10 and this y is gonna be the name given to another memory location where we're gonna be storing this 20. <laughs> So now all of you know that the memory locations are gonna have the memory addresses. So here we're gonna assume that this X is gonna have the memory address one, two, three, four, five, and this Y is gonna have the memory address six, seven, eight, nine, zero. All right, you know, just for the demonstration purpose, we're gonna be considering this one. Okay, now this variable x and y are gonna be stored in different different memory locations and they're gonna be independent of each other. So now in my program, if I change the value of this x variable, then that change will reflect only in the x variable. And if I change the value of y, then you know the change will uh, reflect only in the y variable. So now what if I use x equal to y? Now here what we are trying to do is, we want to store the value of y variable inside the x variable. So let me try to print out the value. So I'm gonna use the system.out.println statement. And here I'm gonna say x equal to, and then I'm gonna append x, and then I'm just gonna copy this print line statement. I'm gonna paste it here. And let me change this one to y. And here also, and uh, let me copy these two print line statements and let me paste it before uh, assigning this x equal to y. All right, now uh, I'm just gonna run this program. Now you guys can see here, when we initialize the variable x equal to 10 and y equal to 20, you know, that particular values are gonna be stored in these variables. So uh, when we assign x equal to y, at that time what happens is the value of y will be copied to this variable x and that's why here in this representation when we do x equal to y the value which will be stored in this y variable will be copied to this x variable so now because of this x equal to y statement our x variable is also going to contain the value of 20. so now here you guys can see this variable x and y are going to be independent of each other they're going to be stored in different different memory locations so here only because of this x equal to y statement you know the value of this x and y both are containing 20 now so now if i change the value of x 
then the change will reflect only in the x variable and if I change the value of y variable then the change will reflect only in the y variable. So whenever we're gonna be using the primitive type the same thing is gonna happen and uh, now let's talk about the java reference types what happens when we create the variables of the java reference types and then uh, when we use it so now uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna remove this code here let's come back to our student class and if you know that the classes and then the arrays are the java reference types so let's consider this student class for our demonstration. Now I have this student class with the class property role number and the method role number please. Now in my tutorial class what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna declare a variable from this student class. So it's gonna be student and then uh, let me call my variable as anil. Now this variable anil is gonna be just like the variables that we have created before you know the variables like x and y. Here the difference is whenever we're gonna create the variables of java reference types at that time the reference variable in this case this anil is gonna contain the reference to an object. So now this anil can contain the reference to an object which you're gonna be creating from this student class. So I'm gonna create an object and I'm gonna store the reference in this anil variable. So it's gonna be anil equal to and then uh, it's gonna be new keyword student. All right, now because of this statement, this new is gonna allocate the memory for the class properties and for all these methods or you know, it's gonna create the object and it's gonna return the reference or you know, the memory address where it has created that object and that reference or the memory address will be stored in this anil reference variable. So now we're gonna create uh, another object and uh, let's say it's gonna be student and let me call it as Srish equal to new student and here also this Srish is gonna contain the reference to an object. So now if I have to draw this then here you guys can see anil reference variable is gonna contain reference to the anil object and this Srish reference variable is gonna contain the reference to this object. So here this anil and Srish you know this anil and Srish you know I'm calling them as the reference variables or you know we can call them objects but actually they're gonna be storing the references to the objects. So now here in this image this anil object and this Srish object are gonna be independent of each other. So when we create the object from this student class at that time this class properties are gonna contain some default values so here the roll number is gonna contain zero and here also is gonna contain zero you know by default and we're gonna learn about that in uh, the next tutorial but here just remember that when we create the reference variables from a reference type at that time that reference variables are gonna contain the reference to the objects you know which is nothing but the memory address so here this anil reference variable is gonna contain the memory address where this anil object is created and this srish reference variable is gonna contain the memory address where this srish object is created. So now uh, we can call this anil and srish as the reference variables or you know we can uh, call them as the objects because you know they're gonna be pointing to or you know referring to the objects. So now if I wanted to access the roll number property of this anil object then I have to write anil dot operator and then the roll number. So I can store let's say one and uh, then uh, similarly you know I can I can access the roll number property of this reach. So it's gonna be reach dot roll number and uh, let's say it's gonna have two. So uh, I'm gonna call anil dot roll number please and then I'm gonna call Srish dot roll number please. And let me place it in uh, separate lines. And then I'm gonna run this program. 
now you guys can see my roll number is one which is from this anil objects roll number please matter and then uh, my roll number is two which is from this srish objects roll number please matter so uh, this anil and srish are gonna be the reference variables which are gonna contain the reference to the objects actually in programming we directly refer them as the objects but you know they're gonna be containing the references so now uh, the one last thing that i want you guys to teach you is what happens if we write anil equal to srish so we have seen for the primitive types you know the values which will be stored in that uh, variables will be copied so here what happens is when we write anil equal to srish at that time srish reference variable this one is containing the reference for example let's assume it is stored in the memory address 1 2 3 4 5 and this is gonna be uh, stored in the memory address um, 5 6 7 8 9 and then you know here the 5 6 7 8 9 will be stored the reference and here 1 2 3 4 5 all right now when we use anil equal to srish at that time the value stored in this srish which is a reference of this srish object will be stored in this anil reference variable so now because of this anil equal to srish statement anil reference variable is gonna contain one two three four five and now it will not point to this anil object it will point to this srish object now if i refer to the roll number property by using this anil reference variable then it will point to the roll number of this srish object not this anil object i think we have changed the roll number to one for anil object and two for this srish object and similarly for this method i'm gonna run this program now now you guys can see my roll number is 2, my roll number is 2. Now because of this assignment, this Anil and Srish are going to be pointing to the same object. Alright, now what happens to the Anil object? Now none of the reference variables are pointing to this Anil object. That's why in Java we have something called garbage collector and that is gonna remove this or you know that is gonna delete this anil object so uh, the java garbage collection will be done uh, automatically by java and uh, the garbage collector is gonna make sure that the objects which are not referenced by any variables will be removed so when we assign anil equal to srish this anil object will point to this srish object and at that time this anil object is not gonna be pointed by any reference variable and that's why that will be removed by the garbage collector so uh, this is it this is about the java primitive types and the java reference types so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys get any doubt please comment it and uh, you guys can get the source code of this tutorial in my website learninglad.com and i'll see you in the next tutorial